Glock triggers, Glock barrels, Glock frames, and even a folding Glock were sighted at TriggerCon. This week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is sponsored by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, a show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this is our Mail Call Mondays Thursday edition, and you can actually thank American Airlines for that. Uh, this last week, I was out in Tacoma, Washington at TriggerCon 2017. Uh, this is the second annual TriggerCon, and by all accounts, TriggerCon keeps getting better each year. Uh, there was a larger turnout, there were a ton of manufacturers there, and what TriggerCon is is basically an industry trade show uh, that is also open to the public, so you could think of it kind of as a mini shot show, but it's a little bit more uh, tactical rifle oriented, uh, although they do cover a wide range of accessories. Uh, it seems like the theme of this trigger con was Glock parts and accessories, uh, although there were quite a few parts and accessories for ARs, uh, long rifles, and other things there. Uh, but we're going to run down and talk to you about some of the things that kind of caught my eye at TriggerCon. Um, this is not necessarily a sampling of everything that was out there. Uh, it was a rather large exhibition hall, uh, but unlike SHOT Show, the show is a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate, and you could very easily walk around and see all of the booths and everything to offer there in one day. So... You could go there on either Saturday or Sunday. Both days were open to the general public, and you could walk through, see everything, get your hands on everything, and not have to worry about flying to Vegas and then trying to pick your way through exhibition halls for a week. Uh, so it was really nice in that aspect. Now, the way TriggerCon was set up, on uh, Thursday was a industry-only range day, so we could actually go out and get some hands-on stuff. And then Friday was an industry-only exhibition hall day, and that really gave uh, folks a chance to walk around, see what all the other companies are up to, uh, do a little bit of networking. So it was really nice on the professional side of things. But then everything that we saw on Friday was open to the public on Saturday and Sunday, and the exhibition halls did get a little bit crowded. Uh, it wasn't incredibly packed like you do get at SHOT Show sometimes, uh, but there was a pretty good crowd rolling in to check out what's going on at TriggerCon. The first thing I've got on my list here to talk about is the folding Glock in the room. Um, some of you guys who have watched our Facebook page or watched some of the other feeds that covered TriggerCon no doubt probably saw the folding M3 Glock from Full Conceal. Now, this is a very interesting concept. I'm not sure I really understand the use case for it. Uh, basically, if you picture this, this is a Glock 19 9mm that the frame was cut just behind the trigger guard and the trigger guard was completely removed. In its place was a folding hinge mechanism slash trigger guard and an actual folding trigger. Uh, so what you can do is release a latch on the back of the pistol and actually fold the pistol grip up underneath the dust cover of the handgun. Uh, the magazine could stay inserted, although you did have to bring the magazine down a bit in order to unlock it from the frame and fold the handgun. Now, the model that was on display was just a prototype, uh, so kind of a proof of concept. It wasn't actually a uh, firing model or one that we could take out and shoot and bang around. They really didn't even want people handling it, although I did get to touch it a little bit. Um, so... Interesting concept, but when we spoke with the reps there at Full Conceal, they said the goal for it is to be able to deploy this pistol in the same amount of time that it would take you to draw a handgun from concealed carry. Uh, now, in my mind, this is a very, very lofty goal. If they're able to do it, that's great. Um, but the thing with the M3 Glock from Full Conceal is that 
when it's folded, it still looks like a handgun. Uh, some of you guys may remember the Magpul flashlight Glock handgun thing uh, from several years back. Uh, where when it was folded up, it just looked like a uh, big bulky flashlight. But when you unfolded it, then it was actually a shoulder stock and tack light for a Glock. Um, that you can hide in uh, plain sight. If you were out walking your dog, walking trails, taking the garbage out, going to get your mail, whatever, and you had this thing in your hand, it just looked like a big bulky, strange looking flashlight. Uh, the full concealed Glock, looks like a folded up handgun. Uh, it's not something that you would walk from the parking lot into your office building carrying in your hand. Uh, that would probably not be a good thing. Uh, so it's still going to have to be either concealed in a pocket or in some kind of pouch or holster or something of that nature. So you're going to have to bring the thing out. You're going to have to unfold it. Uh, presumably you're going to have to chamber around because I'm sure that they're not going to want you to carry it folded with a round in the chamber. Um, and then it will be ready for use. Whereas if you are carrying a concealed weapon ready to go, a standard Glock 26 or Glock 19, for instance, uh, then you just have to deploy the firearm and utilize it. Uh, generally, those of us that carry those kind of handguns carry them with a round in the chamber. So there's no manipulation of the weapon. It's just draw it, place the sights on target, and press the trigger if that action is warranted. Uh, so the idea that you might be able to deploy this thing under stress, unfold it, lock it, insert the magazine, and chamber a cartridge, and get it into use uh, before your attacker is either on top of you or um, you have other issues, I'm not sure that that's there. Now, just because I don't understand an idea or an application doesn't mean that I'm automatically against something. It just means that uh, before I would spend twice the price of a factory Glock, I really need to be able to see the use case for it and see where it could be uh, deployed and uh, used better than what we currently have. Now, I absolutely love innovation, so I wanna see this idea succeed, I wanna see it go forward, I wanna see what the production model looks like and how fast that I could deploy that and get it into service. Uh, but until I actually see that it is a good substitute for a current concealed weapon, uh, that's just something you're really gonna to have to prove to me. Now, there more than likely are applications out there uh, where something like this might be utilized, uh, but I don't see a lot of applications where something like this might be utilized versus just going to the next step down on the size ladder on Glocks, uh, because my Glock 26 with the tack light on it uh, is smaller than the full conceal pistol folded up uh, with everything ready to go. And my Glock 26 can be carried with a round in the pipe, uh, ready to go. And then, of course, I can carry uh, extended magazines somewhere else on my body and be ready to go. Uh, so they really have a huge roadblock to be able to get through uh, to bring this thing to market and prove to potential customers that it is something that they need. So we'll definitely uh, keep track of that going forward. I won't anticipate any uh, actual uh, physical updates to it until SHOT Show, but hopefully when SHOT Show rolls around, uh, those guys will have some firing models of this and we can actually see how well it works uh, when it is a little bit closer to being in a production state. Uh, next, we ran across Polymer 80, and uh, for those of you that have never seen Polymer 80 before, uh, they make uh, ghost frames or ghost guns. Uh, basically, what Polymer 80 is, is they produce a Glock-compatible frame uh, that is an 80% completed lower, so it is not actually a firearm under federal law. Uh, you can order a Polymer 80 frame and have it shipped straight to your door, not have to go through an FFL or anything. And you can finish it out with a drill press or a hand drill and a Dremel. Uh, Polymer 80 said they prefer a drill press, but you can finish it out with a drill press and a Dremel uh, if that's all you've got. And you can actually make the Polymer 80 80% lower into an actual uh, Glock compatible frame. Uh, now they have had their uh, version one frame out for some time and then they came out uh, with the PF940 version, or I'm sorry, the PF940 compact, 
uh, which is their Glock 19 sized frame. And it's really interesting going, I wasn't a real fa big fan of the first generation because it was kind of blocky, uh, didn't look really well refined. Now when they moved into the compact version, they took a lot of the features from the custom Glocks that are out there and a lot of the frame modifications that are being done on Glocks and they integrated them into the compact frame. So it's a really aesthetically pleasing frame and you could get it either plain or get it with a uh, grip texture already on it. So if you're a guy that wants to do your own stippling pattern or own custom job on it, you could get it plain and not have to worry about grinding uh, stippling or texturing off of the frame first before you stipple it. Uh, so really, really cool setup. Well, now they brought out the version two. So the PF940 V2 is a Glock 17 sized frame uh, and it's ready to go. Uh, you just have to do your, uh, your finishing out on it. So it is still an 80%. Um, but they can be finished relatively quickly and comes with the locking block and a few other parts. You'll still need to supply uh, a trigger and some other small parts to actually finish out the bottom. Uh, but then you can take a Gen 3 Glock top end and just drop it on and it will be good to go. Now because a lot of guys aren't going to want to go to the expense of sourcing and buying a Glock factory frame or maybe you want a few extra custom features on your frame, uh, Polymer 80 has now brought out, I'm sorry, on your slide, Polymer 80 has brought out their own branded slides. Uh, so you could actually build almost a complete Polymer 80 gun from uh, aftermarket components and not use a Glock component on the gun. So. It's really cool to the point that Glocks are getting at. I think the, uh, the polymer industry is standardizing on the Glock pattern for custom polymer guns. Uh, so we'll be interested to see how that rolls out. It may be something where later on uh, I grab a hold of a polymer 80 frame just to see how easy it is uh, to complete an 80% lower Glock compatible frame into a firing handgun. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Next, we rolled over to Killer Innovations. Uh, they are the manufacturers of the Orias chassis, which is a Remington 700 compatible chassis. Uh, it was marketed in collaboration with Mega Arms a while back. Of course, Mega has been acquired by Zev Technologies, so uh, we're really not sure how things are gonna roll forward uh, with Zev, but the Orias chassis is still out there and it utilizes a very interesting recoil lug bedding system. Uh, they have kind of a half round inside the chassis system that the recoil lug butts up against, and they have a spacer system that kind of takes up any extra slop uh, between the front of your recoil lug and the chassis, so you get a consistent return to zero when you remove the chassis and drop it back in there. Uh, so it's a really interesting setup and it's been out for a while and speaking to Rick at Killer Innovations he said it's probably due for an update so uh, hopefully sometime soon this year we'll see an update out of the Orias chassis. Uh, Killer Innovations also had on display under the Velocity Arms name uh, some new Glock components. As I said this is Glock Glock and more Glock it seems like. Uh, but they had a very neat Glock barrel uh, that is manufactured in a machine on one machine and it is not touched by human hands through the entire machining process. So they basically uh, take the material, the stock material, put it into the machine, the machine completely finishes it out, rifles it, uh, does all the external finishing and then kicks this thing out, uh, ready to be bead blasted and finished. So it's uh, really an interesting marvel of technology uh, that you can have your barrel cut, chambered, rifled, fluted, all this stuff uh, in one single machine. Of course, being able to do it all in one machine without humans to move stuff around uh, should lower the cost on a barrel machining operation like that. Uh, so we'll see what the final cost is when those come out. Uh, they also had a magwell and a trigger under the Velocity Arms brand out there. Uh, we hopefully will have more information on this uh, as we get a little bit closer to production and delivery on those parts. Uh, we rolled from there over to uh, Mantis Firearms Training Systems. And Mantis has a system that is kind of accelerometer based. And I have uh, the actual box right here. Uh, they have a little attachment 
that goes on a Picatinny rail, and this guy is small. Uh, it's smaller than most tack lights, and you can attach it on a dust cover rail on a Glock or a Picatinny rail, for instance, on our SIG 1911, or even the rail on an AR-15 or a precision rifle. And what it does is it notices the motion of the firearm, and it will listen for the striker fall or the hammer fall uh, when you press the trigger. And combined with the app that Mantis has, uh, this is a really interesting aid to be able to tell you what the quality of your trigger pull is. It will note motion immediately before the trigger fall. It will mo note motion immediately after. So this combined with the app will actually tell you uh, when you're milking your grip or when you're slapping the trigger or all kinds of other deficiencies. And the app will allow you to configure it for handgun or configure it for long gun, uh, etc. Now, when we were talking to Mantis, they explained that uh, they have a bunch of improvements in the pipe for the app. Uh, they should be coming out with some drills and some other things. Uh, so this makes it a very versatile firearms training tool. Now, ours was waiting for us when we got back from TriggerCon. I have literally had five minutes dry firing with this thing before we rolled in here to shoot video. And I will say just in that five minutes, I'm very impressed uh, with the amount of information that this gives me about my trigger pull. Now I didn't get into a lot of drills, but I did notice that I could put this on a Glock, stick it in a holster that was intended for an X300 Ultra, and it will fit on the weapon in that holster. So I did some draw practice and came up and shot, and it really did show me that when I started pushing speed, uh, I was doing some strange things with the gun. Uh, so I think it's going to be very beneficial uh, for helping to fine-tune uh, some of my shooting issues. And the really cool thing about it is it works for dry fire, it works for live fire, and you can even mount this onto an airsoft gun that is uh, CO2 powered and it will uh, work on that as well. When we were at TriggerCon, uh, they had a display set up and they had these mounted to airsoft guns and they had a target on their uh, backboard and we got to uh, shoot the target and see what it was picking up as far as trigger pull, recoil control, that kind of thing. Uh, so again, it's a very interesting device and we will be doing a full review on this going forward. After that, we rolled over to Battle Arms Development, and Battle Arms, both at the range display and at their booth, had their uh, 308 lightweight receiver set on display. Uh, we got some chance to shoot their 308 rifle, and although it is not the production model, they said there are still some tweaks that they're going to do on it. Uh, it was a very nice feeling system, very nice looking system. Uh, now, any of you guys that have gone to trade show shoots, you know, you can't really comment on any kind of accuracy. Uh, because it's just not set up to where you can sit down and shoot groups and then go down and check them. You're usually banging steel or shooting paper that everyone else has drilled 1,600 holes in. Uh, but we did get a chance to shoot it. We didn't have any problems with it. The rifle felt really nice. But what really excited me is the upper and lower and the handguard really are designed to work together. The aesthetic looks right. It doesn't look like you threw a bunch of pieces together. Uh, so it does look like a complete rifle. Uh, in addition to that, Battle Arms told me they are working on their own precision rifle style buttstock. Uh, so we'll really be interested to see what comes out of that. And I can't wait to see the final finished version of their 308 receiver set. Uh, we also cruised by the Enforce booth. Enforce had a nice display on there, and you guys have seen our review of the Enforce APLC compact weapon light, and that was designed specifically for the Glock 19 or the Glock pattern pistols. Although you could put it on a 17, it was designed to fit in the space underneath the dust cover in front of the trigger guard on a Glock 19, and it did that job absolutely spectacularly. Uh, but the original APLC was designed specifically for the Glock dust cover, so the Glock accessory rail. A lot of you guys immediately asked, hey, when are we going to get one for something else? When are we going to get one for a VP9 or for a, a m and etc.? Uh, well, Enforce has now released their APLC for the Picatinny rail, and those should be available very soon. Uh, it's very similar. The function, the guts, the internals, everything is exactly the same as the Glock APLC. Uh, the only difference is the mount was designed to accept the larger Picatinny rail, uh, so you shouldn't have any problems getting that onto uh, most 
handgun receivers that are out there. I can't say all because uh, there are always that one that kind of does its own thing, uh, but they should stick on a wide variety of firearms out there. So you guys that really want an APLC uh, but don't have a Glock, uh, don't worry, that should be coming soon. Our next stop was the Aero Precision booth, and Aero had a couple of new projects on display. Uh, first of all, Aero Precision has been a manufacturer for quite a few other manufacturers out there for a while. They do a lot of OEM work, parts for other companies, uh, but they also have their own line of parts. We actually have a rifle that we built from Aero Precision Upper and Lower uh, around here somewhere in the shop, and they do make some really high quality components. Uh, in the past, Aero Precision has had a line of handguards, uh, but you had to utilize their proprietary upper receiver in order to mount the handguard tube. Uh, the tube mounted directly to the front of the upper receiver. Uh, this design resulted in a rather large diameter handguard. This is great if you like big handguards or you want to tuck a suppressor inside of it, uh, but if you like a thinner handguard, kind of a more light feeling rifle, uh, this really wasn't ideal. Well, Arrow has come out with a new product called the Atlas Handguard, and Atlas stands for Arrow Precision Taper Lock Attachment System. Uh, and what it does is it utilizes a barrel nut uh, that screws onto standard mil spec threads on the front of your upper receiver. Uh, once that barrel nut screws on, attaching the barrel, and you put your gas tube through and everything, you slide the handguard on, and they have a pinch bolt and two wedge type systems and when you tighten it down it pulls the wedges in uh, which then press against the barrel nut and it attaches your handguard on. Uh, it's a really interesting system, looks to be very simple to get the handguard on, get it clocked to where you need it and get things tightened down without worrying about the handguard rolling as you tighten it down. Uh, we played with it there in their booth for a little bit. Uh, it's a really neat setup, just uses regular Allen keys to be able to attach the system. And uh, overall, it felt really nice. Uh, it's kind of a minimalist design, so you have a top rail at 12 o'clock down near the muzzle, and you have a little bit of a rail back by the receiver, and then the rest of it is fairly smooth, and you can place rails wherever you need to place them. Uh, they had M-Lock and Key Mod on display, uh, so you do have some options on uh, what kind of rails you want to put and where you want to put them on the handguard. Uh, so really nice. They had a wide variety of uh, links. Uh, they should be coming out with uh, quite a few here very soon. So keep an eye on that. Uh, also, they had a collaboration with Grey Ghost on a new Glock slide. Um, and again, we keep coming into this Glock pattern, but it was really cool to see each company's different take on Glock parts uh, in this slide will come from Aero Precision. You can either get it in a stripped condition or you can get it as a fully built out upper half to just ready to drop on to whatever Glock project that you are working on. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, designs on these slides, a lot of different styles on the uh, the scalloping, the machining, all the different cocking serrations. Um, of course, you can get them already set up for an RMR, so you don't have to purchase a slide anymore and send it off to a company and have them do a lot of machine work to it because purchasing a factory Glock slide, sending it off, having it machined, having it refinished, uh, aside from the cost of that, you also have the wait time for the machining, the wait time for the refinishing, uh, so it's nice to see that we're getting to a point where you can just buy the parts and get them in without having a huge wait for machine time. Next, we were cruising through the aisles and I saw a booth that was demonstrating a tack light and I thought in the back of my mind, oh great, another tack light, but then I saw their banner above their booth and it said the world's most advanced weapon light. Uh, well, that of course catches my attention because I've used Surefire, Streamlight, Enforce. I've used a great number of different weapon lights. So I really wanted to see what made this the world's most advanced weapon light. And when I got a demo, I, I realized that it's actually a pretty advanced weapon light. I can't 
speak to if it's the world's most advanced, uh, but it's got some really cool features. Now the Trifecta Tactical Weapon Light, uh, when you look at it from the outside, it doesn't really jump out at you. It's just a black cylinder with a tail cap on it and a pretty regular Picatinny mount. Uh, but the important parts are on the inside. The Trifecta Tactical Light utilizes an accelerometer inside of the light to decide when to turn the light on or when to turn it off. Now a lot of us look at that and go, well wait a minute, I don't want a computer deciding when to turn on or off my TAC light. Uh, I want to be able to utilize it myself. Uh, but a lot of us also have quite a bit of time training with TAC lights in low light, in force on force situations. And it's, it's very intuitive for us to be able to bring the light, flip it on, bring it down, turn it off, uh, and utilize all the functions on the weapon light and know when we should and when we shouldn't utilize the light. Um, there are a lot of armed citizens out there that do not train. Uh, they want a home defense gun that's leaning up in the corner of the safe or leaning up in the corner of the room uh, that they can just grab and go. With the, tri or with the Trifecta Tactical Light, then the operation of the light becomes automatic. For untrained people, all they have to do is bring the weapon up. When you bring the weapon up, the light comes on and you're able to see your sight picture. When you bring the weapon back down to low ready, the light shuts off and it's very quick coming up and coming on, coming down and turning off. In addition, if you go into a mode where you need to reload, so your muzzle would go up when you do your mag changes, the light will shut off when the muzzle elevates. Now, a lot of you guys saw this and immediately said, well, what happens if you need to shoot up or shoot down stairs? A lot of us have stairs in our house, and so that would put the gun at an angle and would cause the light to either not function the way it was intended or function when it doesn't need to. Well, there is always a tail cap on it, and you can manually override the light. So overall, it was a really interesting concept. I like to see companies start to step outside of the norm, and I would really like to get my hands on this and take it out and do some low-light drills and see... Uh, if the light is going to function and fill that role for maybe somebody that doesn't have the ability uh, to get out to the range and do a lot of low light shooting and get those weapons manipulation skills down. And I know we can do dry fire, we can do room clearing in our homes to practice the weapon manipulation and the uh, light handling uh, but the reality is a lot of people just don't do that. And so it's nice to see products that are still going to assist you in being as safe as possible uh, without requiring a lot of training on your part. Uh, so we're looking forward to playing with that a little bit more as it comes out. And I'm going to leave links to all these companies down below in the description. So if you want to go see pricing, availability, all this stuff, uh, you can check it out down below. Next up was 2A Armament, and we rolled over to 2A Armament because we kept hearing as we walked through the show about these really lightweight 308 ARs. And when we took a look at them, I really was not disappointed. Uh, 2A Armament had two different lightweight large frame ARs on display, and the first was their XLR-18. This is an 18-inch barreled 308, and it weighed in at 6.75 pounds which is very light for a 308 AR. Uh, the balance on it was very nice. You picked it up, it felt like a light, fast handling rifle. Uh, something that uh, three gunners will probably really, really enjoy. Uh, right next to it, they had a 20-inch version, the XLR20, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and that one came at 6.85 pounds. Uh, now, the barrels on both these rifles were a little bit lighter than what you would want to run on a precision rifle. I think after you heat them up, you may run into a little bit of stringing or a little bit of uh, groups opening up. Uh, we'll have to actually test one to be able to tell if that's true. But if you think about it, once you cut all this weight out of the handguard, the upper and lower receiver, and you choose a lighter weight buttstock option, uh, that then gives you the opportunity to go back in. And when you put a heavier barrel in, you can choose something like a proof carbon fiber barrel or a really heavily fluted barrel. And you can get some rigidity and you can still get some light weight. Uh, because you've taken out a lot of weight out of that bolt carrier assembly and out of those receivers assemblies. Um, you can just get that weight off the gun and then you can control the recoil by tuning the gas system and by brake selection. Uh, so I'm really anxious to see how the handling will be if we built a precision rifle and say 6.5 Creedmoor 
off of one of those receiver sets. So that may be a project that you see in the future. Uh, but 2A is really doing a great job with that. Of course, uh, on the other side of the table, they also had ultra lightweight AR-15s as well. So if you're looking for a truck gun or a three gun gun or something that's a really light, nice handling AR, definitely check out 2A Armament. Uh, and again, we'll leave the links for everything down below. Uh, the last, uh, or second to last booth that we had on our list, we rolled over to Danger Close Armament. And Danger Close does uh, polymer handgun customization, and they had several different handguns on display. They do M&Ps as well as Glocks, um, but they had quite a few full custom Glocks on display. And I have really started to gain an attraction to these full custom uh, polymer pistols. Uh, for a long time, a full custom pistol usually meant a 1911 or a CZ clone. Uh, but now we're getting into the polymer pistols, and Danger Close not only had modified Glocks, but they had full custom pistols built on the polymer 80 frames. Uh, Danger Close also has a service now where you can purchase a stippled polymer 80 from them, so they can do a lot of their custom work to a polymer 80 frame and send it out to you, and you can finish it out. Uh, so really interesting there. If you don't have the skills to do some of these custom stippling patterns or uh, custom machine work to the actual frame itself, uh, then Danger Close can take care of you, and you can finish out the receiver at home. Uh, so really interesting products there. Now, finally, we came to the Hudson Manufacturing H9. Uh, we got to shoot it again out at the industry day at the range, and then we uh, rolled by their booth and did a little bit of handling uh, there in the show. Uh, the Hudson H9 is a very interesting new handgun. Uh, they have displayed them at SHOT Show. They are getting very close to actually de delivering the production versions now. Uh, we were still handling pre-production versions at the show, uh, but they are pretty close to being done from what I understand uh, talking to the owner. Uh, one of the most novel features of it is they drop the recoil system uh, or the operating system a little bit lower in the dust cover. So whereas most handguns, the dust cover is fairly close to the bottom of the slide and you have this huge notched out area in front of the trigger guard. Uh, the Hudson H9, uh, that dust cover comes all the way down almost completely flush with the bottom of the trigger guard and it gives you some room to move that spring and that operating rod down so that you can get the barrel sucked in as close to your hand as possible. It lowers the center of gravity of the pistol and when it recoils, it gets that center line a little bit closer to your arm and to your wrist and helps to minimize that recoil. The addition is the grip angle is a 1911 grip angle. So those of you guys that are really familiar with 1911s, uh, when you pick this pistol up, it points right for you. Uh, but then from there, they utilized a lot of the striker fired systems and features from polymer pistols. Uh, so there is no manually operated safety. Uh, it's all internal. There is a trigger safety and a drop safety. Uh, but then you have the other striker fired features to the operating system. Uh, so the only real controls on the side of the gun is your slide release and your magazine release. And it is a double stack 9mm, uh, so you do get the added firepower that you get with the polymer pistols but you get it in an all-steel pistol with a 1911 grip angle. Now, because of the look of the pistol, it looks different. It catches a lot of weird glances from people, and because of the form factor of the pistol, there is one slight drawback, and that is attaching tack lights to it. Uh, right now, there's no tack light that is designed specifically for that handgun. You can put a stream light or a surefire, whatever your favorite tack light is on it, but it will hang down lower underneath the barrel, and it will move those paddles down, so that causes issues uh, with duty-type holsters. That causes issues... Uh, with some other things and with the ergonomics of actually working with the light. Uh, you end up controlling the light with your support side trigger finger instead of with your support side thumb uh, that a lot of us are used to. But overall, I get a little bit of uh, glee every time I shoot that handgun and I'm really anxious to see it reach its production stage and get one of the full-on production models in my hand. Uh, it's a really fun gun to work with. Every time I pick one up and jam a magazine into it and have the slide automatically go forward like the Glocks do, um, 
it just brings a smile to my face. So it's obviously not a pistol for everybody, uh, but if you're one of these guys that likes the feel of a 1911 but wish you had some of the features of some of the striker fired handguns, uh, that is basically what you get with the Hudson H9. And speaking with Cy Hudson, um, I have to give him a whole lot of credit about trying to bring a new handgun into the market. It is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, there are all kinds of production roadblocks, but this is a really cool setup, and I really want to see this handgun succeed. Uh, so expect to see more of that uh, when that handgun starts showing up. Now, I realize we didn't have a whole lot of precision rifle content in this episode of Mail Call Mondays, but it's really because TriggerCon was more tactically oriented, more AR and handgun oriented uh, than it was precision rifle. Uh, but don't worry, we've got some precision rifle content coming soon. We've got a lot of products that we are working with. Uh, one thing is while we were out at TriggerCon, Modular Driven Technology sent in one of their new skeleton carbine stocks. Uh, so we'll be testing this guy out and see how well it works out. Uh, in addition to the Mantis while we were gone, uh, we also had Vault Tech send over one of their new Pro VTI safes. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, we are one of the first to get our hands on the production version uh, to go through do a full rundown, a full video. That will be coming very soon. And one thing about it is if you keep a handgun at home for defense, you really need to make sure you have a way to secure that handgun when it is not on your body. Uh, we have a lot of problems when people just stick handguns in drawers, stick them in closets. Uh, you wouldn't believe in my other professional life uh, how many reports of stolen handguns we have. Uh, this guy right here will actually hold two handguns. It will hold a full-size combat handgun with an extended magazine in your holster with a mag carrier in it. Uh, so it's got a ton of room in it, and it has the ability to screw this thing down to something solid. So you can screw it into studs, you can screw it into the floor, uh, you can screw it into furniture that is going to be difficult to move, and it has a ton of options on how to actually get into it. Uh, but that is going to be for the full review. I've got to work with it a little bit, find out what its quirks are, find out if it's got any problems, and then we'll take it from there. So if you guys have any questions on uh, gun safes, questions on the Mantis system, questions on the MDT skeleton stock, or anything else that we've covered on this Mail Call Mondays, you can send them to us at 8541tactical at gmail.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can leave it in the comment section down below, or you can send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. And until next time, get out and shoot!